the last presentation of, uh, for today, uh, which will be given by Dr. Uh, Margarita Kovalova. Uh, I'm really happy to be able to uh, present my work uh, today, because uh, unless this, uh, um, this online conference, I would not be able to participate because of the uh, because of this um, corona infection, isolation. Uh, anyway, so today I would like to present a work uh, which concerns uh, analysis of stationary and non-stationary um, dynamics of uh, three uh, harmonically coupled pendulums. Uh, and uh, this work uh, has uh, uh, has a big meeting for our uh, team. Uh, there are uh, many works uh, concerning this uh, kind of um, this kind of um, analysis. And uh, what is uh, what is uh, important uh, is that uh, the main uh, purpose of the work was. Uh, to model uh, the strongly nonlinear system. So uh, the system uh, has uh, both nonlinear uh, on site and coupling potentials. And uh, we have uh, used the most simple uh, case, uh, which is harmonic potential. And there, uh, it, it can be used for different real physical systems. Paraffin chains, uh, spin lattices, ferromagnetic chains, DNA molecules. And uh, I will uh, consider the basic analysis, uh, which will be uh, clear for low dimensional systems. And tomorrow, Professor Manevich will present the work which is uh, completed for much more complex system uh, for the um, ferromagnetic chains. So uh, we uh, here are the cited works and the first of them uh, was uh, devoted to the analysis of dynamics uh, of weakly coupled pendula um, and weakly coupled chains. So um, the papers uh, have made, uh, in these papers, it was made a successful attempt to provide analysis of motion without quasi-linear assumptions of local potential. However, the uh, system did have the linear coupling. Uh, and uh, I will consider a bit more complex system with nonlinear coupling uh, also. So, does it work? Let me proceed yeah, now. Uh, so, why the nonlinearity is so important? Uh, the main problem appears when the uh, quasi-linear approach cannot be applied. So when the amplitudes, uh, in this case, when the amplitudes are high, and then uh, the quasi-linear approach uh, doesn't work. So the most simple system uh, is uh, the system of two uh, coupled pendula. So uh, the Hamiltonian of the system uh, looks as follows. Uh, let me make a pointer. Okay, so the Hamiltonian of the system looks as follows, and there are the equations of motion. Here you see the sign uh, of the coupling force and sign uh, on the uh, in the on-site potential, and uh, Q is the uh, angle of displacement of each pendulum, and beta is uh, the coupling parameter. So uh, we suppose that coupling is weak enough for our um, for for our um, analysis to uh, be uh, valid. So uh, here we also suppose that uh, the system as a whole and all the pendulum uh, pendula um, move uh, at some frequency which is uh, common for all the system. So we suppose that there is some basic frequency 
maybe this will be the uh, uh, the frequency of some of the nonlinear normal modes, but still now we do not fix it. And we suppose that this motion will be, or the motion with this frequency will be the governing, and the rest will be the uh, small perturbation of the uh, main uh, motion. And then we can uh, introduce into the system the main resonating term, and then the, the rest of the system uh, can be considered as perturbation. Then we proceed to the complex variables, uh, which are quite common for many of the multiple scale analyses uh, cases. And then we obtain the system in the following form, where the sign uh, can be presented as uh, following sum. Uh, and then we proceed to the multiple scale procedure. Uh, and uh, here we separate fast uh, resonate, resonating uh, motion and the slow envelope evolution. And here we obtain the equation of motion in the main asymptotic approximation. We obtain the equation of motion for the envelope functions, uh, which uh, it has uh, such a nonlinear uh, view. And here the resonating terms, the secular terms, uh, which we obtained uh, supposing that uh, the motion is uh, limited, um, have uh, the vessel functions inside. So the amplitudes are not supposed to be small, which is important in our, uh, in our case. So uh, now we would like to check the applicability of our assumptions. And first of all, we, we will consider the nonlinear normal modes of the system. And uh, due to the symmetry of the system, we expect here in-phase and anti-phase nonlinear normal modes. And introducing the uh, conditions for the modes, uh, we obtain the uh, two values of um, frequency. Uh, depending on the initial excitation of the system in phase mode and for the anti phase mode. And he represented the something this song. mental results, which uh, are defined by the dots, and uh, up to high amplitudes. So uh, up to amplitudes uh, uh, with uh, um, almost uh, pi, uh, almost uh, with the initial excitation equal to almost pi. So uh, we see that uh, our assumption works quite good for the nonlinear normal modes. And uh, then we would like to uh, consider the system uh, even uh, outside of the uh, nonlinear normal modes motion. And here we introduce uh, two new uh, variables. So we use the fact that the system has a uh, new equation of motion, which is, I'm sorry, where I am, uh, where uh, this, the new system in the slow time scale uh, possesses the new integral of motion, uh, which uh, is uh, the sum of the amplitudes of our um, uh, of our displacements. And uh, here uh, we uh, introduce using this new integral of motion, we introduce uh, new uh, angular variables. Uh, where theta is the relation between the variable uh, defining relation between the excitation levels of the two um, pendulum, uh, pendula and delta is the phase shift between them. And uh, we obtain the system of the two nonlinear equations and uh, now the system can be presented on the phase plane. And here uh, we see uh, the representation of our system on the phase plane. 
Uh, on the vertical axis uh, is presented the uh, variable theta, which is uh, one more time the relation between the excitation levels of the two uh, pendula. And uh, on the horizontal axis, you see delta, which is the phase shift between the two pendula. And, uh, and here we see the stationary points, which correspond to the two nonlinear normal modes of the system. Uh, in phase and out of phase, and the red uh, red uh, dashed line is the limiting phase trajectory, which corresponds to the maximum uh, maximal possible energy exchange between the two uh, pendula. So when theta is equal to zero, all the energy is placed on one of the pendula, and uh, when theta is equal to pi divided by two, all the energy is placed on the another one. And here we see the evolution of the phase plane uh, if we uh, change the, if we decrease the coupling parameter. And if uh, we decrease the coupling parameter, first of all, the two, station, two new stationary points appear. They are the localized uh, nonlinear normal modes of the system. However, um, this, their appearance does not change the globally the phase uh, uh, phase space of the system. And only when the separatrix and the limiting phase trajectory collide, then the, uh, with the initial conditions when all the energy is placed on the one of the two pendula, uh, the energy will not be uh, transferred to the second pendulum, and then uh, we uh, call this state as the uh, dynamical localized state. So uh, we can also define analytically uh, the threshold value for the coupling parameter when the localization appears. So we can also describe the limiting phase trajectory, uh, so the beating uh, between the two pendula, we can describe uh, their uh, evolution analytically uh, in terms of the non-smooth functions. I will not um, go into the details, but anyway, we have uh, the analytical uh, representation of such a, um, such a com uh, complex uh, uh, movement of the system. And we have found also the analytical representation for the um, localized uh, state when the energy cannot transfer from one of the uh, pendulum to another. Uh, and we have also checked the applicability of our, uh, of the transition for different values of the coupling parameter for the initial system. And we see the good correspondence between the uh, uh, phase plane and the, um, concurrent sections of the initial system. And we see how the system is transferred from the beating regime when the energy can be transferred from one of the uh, oscill one of the pendulum to another to the localized state when the energy cannot be transferred from one to another. The phase, um, phase regions are separated. So, and now I will proceed to a bit more complex system. Here we see the uh, three uh, pendula. And the only problem is that uh, even when we proceed with the, uh, with the um, uh, slow time scale, uh, we obtain the system which is not integrable. And then uh, we have to consider some new techniques to uh, proceed with the analysis. So here we uh, first look at the numerics and here we see that we also can uh, consider the uh, localized regime where all the energy stays, uh, almost all the energy stays on one of the pendula or the uh, dynamical transition uh, to another state when the energy can be periodically or almost periodically transferred from one of the side uh, pendula to another one. And uh, then uh, using the same technique, uh, 
uh, we obtain the slow motion, the equations of motion, there is a slow time scale. I still uh, remind that the amplitudes are not supposed to be small and we still think on the motion when there is some governing uh, uh, frequency uh, which allows us to uh, proceed to the slow, evol uh, slow um, evolution of the, of the uh, envelope functions of the initial uh, signal. And here we have found also the in-phase and anti-phase nonlinear normal modes of this system. The third mode, which should uh, appear in the quasi-linear case, does not survive for the uh, highly nonlinear case and we will not consider it. Uh, so we have here uh, almost equal values for the um, frequencies of the nonlinear normal modes, both in phase and anti phase. And here you see the comparison between the analytical and numerical results, the same way as in the system of the two pendula. And here we see the um, stability and instability regions of the nonlinear normal modes. So the gray, um, the gray region defines the uh, instability of the nonlinear normal mode, uh, which I call antiphase. Uh, the red region defines the um, instability region for the nonlinear normal mode, which I call the in-phase mode mode 111. And uh, here you see the blue dashed line, which defines the uh, condition for the uh, localization threshold. When the, uh, uh, when the uh, pendulum, uh, which was initial, uh, when one of the uh, side pendulums was initially um, excited and then all the energy is transferred to the uh, second one, uh, to, to the uh, third one, to the another side pendulum and vice versa. And uh, we see that the transition is not connected to the instability of any of the nonlinear normal modes which exist in this system, uh, which uh, means that there should be some other mechanism uh, for that. And uh, we use uh, the transition to, oh, here we represent the system in terms of the angular variables. However, uh, the dimensionality of our system is higher. And then we proceed to the spherical coordinates. If in the system of the two pendula, uh, we were considering the system on the plane and there was the polar, uh, variables representation. Here we proceed to the, uh, to the uh, spherical coordinates where delta 1, 2 and delta 2, 3 are the phase shifts between the first and second and second and third uh, pendula and theta A and phi are uh, excitation level relations between the three, um, between the three um, Pendula. So we have the system which is 4D, but to be able to uh, consider the evolution of the system, we need uh, to reduce the dimensionality of the system. So we use uh, also the Hamiltonian of the system, which is the integral of motion, and using it, we can reduce the dimensionality of the system. And I'm then. Sorry, two, two minutes left. Okay, okay, I'm almost done. Uh, and uh, so we can uh, consider the Poincare sections of the system uh, on the plane phi delta one two. Uh, we can uh, uh, we can see both the C one C two stationary points of the slow motion, which are the periodic. Uh, motions of the system. And uh, the red um, dotted line defines the uh, limiting phase trajectory, uh, which is the trajectory corresponding to the maximum uh, 
maximum uh, periodic energy exchange between the two uh, side oscillators, between the two side uh, pendula. And here we see the evolution of the phase space. Uh, we see that the uh, chaotic motion uh, is uh, uh, introduced into the phase space. We see the appearance of the new stationary points, which correspond to the new uh, periodic motion of the system. And then we see that uh, the new periodic regimes uh, uh, and quasi-periodic regimes appear, uh, which correspond to the uh, limited, uh, to, to the um, periodic or quasi-periodic motion. So we see here all the stationary points of the Poincaré maps, and they correspond to the um, localized, C1 and C2 uh, correspond to the localized motion when uh, all the energy, almost all the energy is placed on one of the side pendula. And here we see that if we uh, increase the, the coupling parameter, we obtain the periodic energy exchange between the two side oscillators. And we have also considered the, uh, the uh, past Fourier transformation of the uh, results obtained, of the uh, signals obtained. And we see here the main frequency and the additional frequencies corresponding to the um, envelope function's periodic evolution. And we see that if we increase the, um, the uh, coupling parameter, uh, the additional frequencies appear, which uh, uh, lead to the uh, common scenario to the transition to chaotic motion. And then we see also here the realization of the periodic energy exchange between the two side uh, pendula. And here you see also the, that uh, this motion is not completely uh, periodic even in the slow time scale, uh, while we see here additional uh, frequencies, which means that the motion is quasi-periodic in uh, uh, common sense. So um, there are my conclusions. Uh, we have uh, made, we have developed the new uh, method for the study of the strongly nonlinear systems. And uh, we have applied this method to the um, stationary and non -sta to the study of the stationary and strongly non-stationary um, solutions uh, of the uh, system of the three coupled pendula of the short uh, clean uh, of the uh, short uh, uh, pendula uh, or sinolatis uh, and uh, our uh, transformation to the angle variables and uh, reduction of the degrees of freedom of the system allowed us to make the Poincaré maps study and to predict the appearance of the localized uh, or delocalized solutions. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, I see one, at least one question by uh, Elena Grekova first. Uh, thank you very much, Margarita. Yes. Thank you very much, Margarita, for your presentation. Um, mm, I, you know, uh, I mean, uh, pendulum system uh, um, investigated uh, during uh, in in literature. Of course, maybe not uh, exactly in the way you did, but uh, for some people who perhaps are not specialists, it would be great to see the comparison. For example, um, Ilya Israelovich Blechman he investigated a lot of. Uh, different pendulum system, uh, for example, two pendulum slender beam be between them, and uh, when there is some dissipation, then we observe syn synchronization. When there is no dissipation, then synchronization is not possible. Uh, you know his works, no? Of course, of course. I know many works by him and by other authors also, uh, uh, from St. Petersburg and from Moscow. So uh, the uh, main purpose of this work was first the development of the high amplitude uh, uh, approximate solutions. Uh, 
uh, which is not that common for such a case. And the second was uh, the second purpose was to study uh, strongly non-stationary regimes. So you know, stationary regimes are a bit more easy for for the treatment. And our uh, big advantage is that we can study the strongly non-stationary um, solutions, uh, which uh, so the solutions with the maximum energy exchange are extremely non-stationary. There is nothing to be stationary there. And we are able to uh, construct uh, uh, asymptotic analysis for such a complicated case. So I do know um, many works uh, concerning the pendulum systems. It's really uh, a quite common toy model uh, for different uh, real physical um, systems. However, there are no works uh, which uh, allow to uh, study strongly non-stationary uh, and uh, high amplitude solutions for such a systems. Uh, you know, perhaps the very early Blechman's work in 54, um, when he actually started to to look for synchronization because uh, uh, a rotor which was decoupled from electricity started to work due to synchronization with another rotor and there you have uh, um, rotations i mean uh, this is not these are not uh, uh, small oscillations uh, these are essentially nonlinear rotations with high amplitudes uh, uh, of course it must be a different case but what i say yes. that it would be nice to see the comparison, for example, you have show, shown this thing, and uh, for example, in Blechman case, there is such a thing, and uh, due to absence of uh, dissipation, you know the work which I'm talking of. Uh, I I will give. Uh, I I looked uh, now in uh, Scholar Google com, but I I cannot uh, uh, rapidly find it. Uh, may I share the screen uh, or not? Uh, can someone uh. give me? Uh, so uh, actually, uh, we, we we do not deal with the rotations. We deal only with the oscillations, but high amplitude oscillations when the quasi-linear approach is not valid. But the rotations is also um, highly nonlinear case. I do agree, but it's uh, just another limiting case when we uh, make the when we increase the excitation level, then we proceed to the rotations, of course. But it's it's mm -hmm. not my case. So we, we deal with the rotations also using our approximation and also we, uh, I do know uh, many works on rotors, uh, not only by Blackman, but uh, there are plenty of them. And there are uh, rotor breathers and there are uh, many, many different cases uh, concerning rotations. But in this limiting case, we consider only oscillations. I mean, if you know this work, then uh, yes, no yes, problem. I, I do, I don't know, I don't know. Thank it you. It was Thank published in, in '54, and, and another thing also that there are recent uh, works by Vertigro and Pavlovska also on Kalkos. Uh, yes, uh, I, I don't know them. Yeah, you know them. Unfortunately, <laughs> Vertigro is not not uh, attending this conference this year. <laughs> Okay, so thank you very much for the, such an active discussion.